In this quick gem, I'll be showing you briefly how you can get this crazy looking chrome effect on your text, which is pretty trendy and can be used in a lot of cool sh**. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back to another quick jam. I'm Rupin from Jammed, and today I'll be doing this chrome material text using Blender, Illustrator, and a little bit of Photoshop for the lighting. Pretty trendy effect for posters you could implement in your designs to get a new feel for your work. Okay, so the first step is to take a pen and any piece of paper you have at home, write in whatever you want, and then scan it, or take a picture with your phone, and then put it inside of Illustrator so we can start tracing with the curvature tool, which is exactly like the pen tool, but just smoother with the curves. Make sure to lock the image you import in Illustrator and go over the lines, separate them by pressing V and get the selection tool out and click somewhere else and get back to the tracing again. Great, once you're done tracing the text, give it a thick stroke width and you can adjust the path using the direct selection tool, move it around till it looks good to you. After you're done adjusting, select the round cap option, the strokes tab and grab the width tool and start playing around with the width of each stroke to make it look more playful. When you're happy, click on object, expand and as an extra step that is not really needed, you can simplify to smoothen things out a little. Then go ahead and save everything as an SVG and that's pretty much it with Illustrator. Now we want to get something vibrant that we could use as a surrounding light that will give the crazy chrome effect. Head on to Pexels and search abstract and you'll find a bunch of cool stuff there and just in case you want to create your own crazy colors, get an image with colors that you like and head on to Photoshop and up here go to Filter, Liquify and start doing some random gobbles and swivels, whatever the hell those mean and you'll have the same effect. Save that picture and head on to Blender now. First of all, get rid of that cube, go to file, import and click on the SVG format. Find that SVG that we had saved and open it up. You will find that it's quite small in our viewport. Zoom in and select all the letters together and go into object, convert and to mesh and press Ctrl Command J to merge things together and then hit tab, go into edit mode, press A to select everything and press E to extrude our letters to give them a little bit of thickness. Get rid of that black color through the materials panel down here to see things a little bit more clearly. Get back into object view by pressing tab and head into the modifiers tab and here you can add a new modifier. Look for the remesh modifier and make the voxel size number as low as you can get it to show the details of the mesh while at the same time not so low that your PC turns into a toaster and lights your entire house up on fire. In that case I would totally understand it if you decided to send death threats in the comments and leave a dislike on this video. Now go ahead and apply the modifiers to the drop section here and then right click on the mesh and choose smooth shading. This is the part in which you smooth things out to get rid of all of these stupid voxels. Head over to the sculpting workspace and there are two main things that we're going to do here. Choose the inflate tool and before you inflate make sure to smoothen the edges out and you can do that by any brush holding shift and clicking and dragging over it and you'll start to see that things are smoother. Zoom out and make sure you smoothen everything out quickly and then use the inflate tool and start inflating certain parts to make them blobbier and you can deflate them again holding control and drawing over them. Go back to the layout workspace once you're done, rotate it on the X axis by pressing R and X and type in 90, press numpad 1 to get a direct view from the side and control alt numpad 0 to bring the camera on the target and move it around a bit by pressing G and now let's set up the material. Head to the shading panel and down here change to world to apply the surrounding light that we just did on Photoshop. Drag in the image we just made on Photoshop, shift A and add in both nodes called texture coordinate and mapping. Plug them together like the following and on the right side here in the world settings, go ahead and click on color, change it to environment texture and choose the picture we just imported. Now hold Z and go into rendered view and it should be surrounding the object. Select our word, add a new material to it, metallic 100, roughness 0 and voila. To render this without the background, go into the render settings, film and tick the transparent option. Now when you press F12, you will have the transparent background. If you want to animate the light to make it look more dynamic, you gotta animate the mapping node. Drag a new window into the shading workspace and insert a timeline, then at the very first frame go to mapping and click on any value in the rotation and press I to add a new keyframe, then move forward again in the timeline, change the value, press I again to add another keyframe and press space to play the animation and you're pretty much done. Another thing that you should do is turn on very high contrast down here in the render settings which makes the whole thing pop a little better. Select the output folder in the output settings and make sure you're rendering everything as PNG, then go ahead and select render animation from top. See you later.